Somewhere in the far future, when mankind has seemingly ceased to exist, embodiments of gemstones at the behest of a monk-like leader fight to survive being harvested by a cavalry of archers hailing from the moon. Mixed in this survival are poignant looks at curiosity, loneliness, purposelessness, and mortality. It's an exploration of finding your place in a strange world that doesn't appear to need you, despite your best intentions. It's about pushing forward and fighting, not because of strength, but in spite of it. This is Haruko Ichikawa's Land of the Lustrous. Land of the Lustrous is set in a world that has long since decayed into a single shore, which has become the home to these anthropomorphic versions of gemstones known as the Lustrous, who typically live their lives on high alert. Being a beautiful gem comes with the curse of always being vigilant of the Lunarians, a choir of tarot card looking moon people who are driven by the beauty of the Lustrous. Whether they are sentient beings or not remains to be seen, but they seem to be solely motivated by attacking and shattering the Lustrous so they can collect the very pretty, very shiny shards. The story focuses on a rather precarious Lustrous by the name of Foss, which is short for the gemstone Phosphophylline. Despite being one of the most brittle and fragile of the Lustrous, this doesn't stop them from wanting to help the other Lustrous protect their homes, especially from the Lunarians. Sympathizing with their lack of purpose, the father figure, the teacher, the instructor of the Lustrous by the name of Kongo Sensei gives Foss the important task of cataloging everything to create a living history of the world. Now, Foss finds this to be obvious, boring, busy work, like go over there and do this kind of work, but despite this, they oblige anyway. Foss's curiosity brings them to the far reaches of the shore where they meet Cinnabar, a Lustrous forced to live in isolation due to their curse of killing everything that they come in contact with. For example, if they step on grass, it kills all the grass. If they go in water, the water becomes polluted. And even in spite of this, Foss comes to Cinnabar and Cinnabar warns him, like, don't come near me or you are going to get hurt. Foss ignores their warning of caution, instead thrilled to find someone that they can finally understand. Someone like them, who has little to no use to everyone else. Land of the Lustrous is a manga that took me by surprise how much I enjoyed it. I bought Land of the Lustrous kind of on a whim. I was at the bookstore, nothing was grabbing my attention. I picked this up and thumbed through it a little bit, and I thought, you know what, I'm not leaving empty-handed. I don't want to just leave here with nothing, and I, I bought the first two volumes of it, and I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Not even surprised by the fact that I enjoyed it, because I, I easily enjoy things. I'm very easily entertained. I was really, really honestly surprised with how deep and thought-provoking and how much this manga made me think. Feel. It is this hauntingly beautiful tale of finding your place in a world that doesn't seem to need you despite your best intentions. I find myself relating to a lot of what Foss goes through more than pretty much most manga characters in manga that I read. Even though these characters aren't human, Haruko Ichikawa manages to write gemstones to be more human than humans themselves. More to it than that is that this manga leaves you with kind of this really hard to describe feeling. Cover to cover, book to book, it really makes you feel like you're in this kind of constant, eerie, dreamlike state. And the way it does that, in addition to the characters and how well they're written, how they all interact with each other, is that it has this really unmatched, well-rounded, cultivated atmosphere that I have yet to find replicated in any other manga. It's just so wholly unique the way that this manga kind of presents its characters, its setting, and its story. Like, all the landscapes and backgrounds have kind of this eerie emptiness and vastness to it. The way that they're actually drawn and inked and, and shaded and everything actually remind me of tarot cards. All of the action shots and all of the fight scenes, as brief and as to the point as they are, are so beautifully choreographed. Haruko Ichikawa excels in presenting this unique art style that somehow fuses both intricacy and minimalism. The way this manga makes use of negative space to emphasize action, or to simply portray the bleak, empty world that the lustrous inhabit, is nothing short of genius. There's a mood about this manga that it is leagues beyond successful in cultivating. Everything about this manga, the way that it's paneled, the way that the characters are presented, the way that it uses negative space, all lends to kind of this sympathizing idea of anxiety in the way that you sympathize with how anxious the characters can be because there's always this persistent looming threat of the Lunarians coming down, attacking you, shattering you, and taking you back to the moon. You know, in order to survive in a very tranquil, peaceful place, you have to be on constant high alert. There's no room for relaxation. There's no room for even getting close to other people because you could know someone for one day and the next day they're jewelry on the moon. You know, one moment you're sitting in an empty field far from home, but all of a sudden a sort of sun ray appears and you're fighting for your life. And exactly like the Lustrous, for a brief moment, you're kind of captivated by the otherworldly beauty of the Lunarians, only to immediately remember that you are in danger and you need to protect yourself and to protect your friends. Land of the Lustrous spends a lot of time pondering mortality and purpose. With such little left in the world for the Lustrous to have, even the smallest slip-up can be the difference between seeing your friends one day and being harvested by moon people the next. It's all about giving it your all, 
doing your best, being genuine, and seeing everything through to the next day. At least tomorrow, you might be of some use to some people. Anyways, folks, that is it for today's review. If you guys like this, let me know in the comments down below. Hit me up on Twitter or Instagram, at each shelf. And yeah, let me know. If you guys have read this, let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts on Land of the Lustrous. I am currently up to date with the English releases. I, I, I know it just went on hiatus in Japan. Hopefully that doesn't last too long. But this manga, honestly, guys, is just... It, it quickly became a really fast favorite of mine. I love all the characters. I love where this manga goes. Like, just the places this manga goes, especially down the line after Volume 4, are just incredible. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Your support means a heck of a lot to me. It gives me the motivation to give you guys the manga content that you deserve. And as always, don't forget to support Legal Manga. Go to www.wherecanireadmanga.com to get the lowdown on where you, the viewer at home, can read manga for free through a subscription or per volume. Do it all in the way that supports people who work in the manga industry, supports the creators, supports the publishers, and gets us more manga like this stuff right here. But until next time, folks, happy reading.